Jonathan is with us in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hey, what's up? Uh, well, um, unfortunately, my uncle passed away earlier this week. Oh, my. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous here. That's okay. Um, sorry to hear that. Were you close? Yeah. Yeah, I was. He was like a dad to me. Mm. Oh, man. Um, going through his paperwork and his will, it looked like uh, he left me quite a bit in his estate. Um, total amount looks like it's probably going to be over half a million dollars. I'm not exactly sure what to do with it. Mm. In cash or in what? Uh, real estate, a home that's worth about 400 that he owned outright. And then the rest is, I haven't figured out exactly how much it is, but it's at least a hundred thousand in checking account, a pension and another retirement account. Mm. What do you make a year? Uh, about 65. How old are you? 33. Okay. You ever handled anything like an estate before? I had with my mom, but it was uh, valued at probably about 100000 so it was obviously a lot less than this. Okay. So are you, uh, you found the will then? Yes. Okay. So you've been appointed the executor of the estate. Correct. And you are the only heir? Correct. Okay. So my advice first would be to contact a good estate probate attorney to probate the will and get you put in charge of each of these accounts as soon as possible by the court. Okay. okay. And we actually did start the process on that, but we still have to wait for the death certificate, unfortunately. Yeah, it, ta it takes a little time, but I I'm glad to know you're already yeah. doing that. Good. Okay. And, uh, well, it, uh, the emotion is real. A and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you guys were close. He was like a dad to you, and he was obviously loved you a lot. He left you everything. And so what do you do with $500,000 when it's set in the middle of your kitchen table all of a sudden in $100 bills? What do you do with that? Well, obviously, we want to be wise with it. Um, overall, there's three things you can do with money. You can give it, you can enjoy it, and you can invest it. And those are the three things you can do. And you really probably should do all three of those things with this money. Now, we teach a thing called the baby steps, and so my son is about your age. If he inherited that all of a sudden, I would advise him, and he would already know <laughs> because he's my son, to walk right up the baby steps with that money. And, um, you know, where would that take you? Are you aware of all of that? Yeah, so I actually have no debt other than my house. Which you owe how much um, on? Uh, 159 so I was planning on writing a check for that. Okay. Pretty soon after everything's closed. Okay. Um, then that puts you at what we call baby step seven, where there's nothing left to do but build wealth and be generous. You remember that? Does that sound familiar to you? Yes. Okay. Jonathan, that's an incredible place to be, but I know it doesn't feel like it right now. Yeah. I know you're you're hurting. Um, I think it's awesome that you're calling and you're getting wise counsel on what to do with this large amount of money. You're already taking the right steps. You've already handled this before. It may have been a, a different amount of money, but you've gone through this. And so I want you to lean on, on those skills and let that give you a sense of peace and confidence as you as you walk this out again. And then know as you do, yeah, you're in a really good position financially to do anything you want to. You're young mm -hmm. to have this. What a gift that your uncle left you at your young age. You'll never have debt again, ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an incredible gift and legacy that he gave you. And um, and I know you're hurting right now, and it's hard to even feel that. And that's okay, too. That's okay. So one of the things I try to do um, that I have done gradually, I never got a, uh, in the early days anyway, I never got a half-million-dollar check at one time come into my life. Mm -hmm. But what I did gradually is I increased my knowledge uh, by putting experts in my corner to teach me. And that's kind of where we came up with the saying with endorsed local providers or with SmartVestor Pros when you're meeting with people in the money space, you need someone with the heart of a teacher, not someone to boss you around. And Because I hate it when people say, well, I couldn't buy a car. My advisor told me I couldn't. And I'm like, well, it's not your advisor's money, you dube. It's your money. 
You tell your advisor what to do. They just give you advice. Um, and so that's just a cop-out, meaning I don't have enough. So I want you to have enough backbone to make your own decisions as opposed mm-hmm. to that person I just outlined. But I want you to put some advisors, some teachers in your corner. And so, you know, you do need to meet with a smart vester pro and learn about some investing options. Um, what you, are your thoughts on the house? You, you, uh, it, probably not going to keep it. Uh, I mean, if you want to keep it as a rental, you can. I, I think it's going to be troublesome. Uh, I don't know if you're going to have the money with everything you've outlined to completely pay your house off unless, if you keep it. Number two, when you rent out your uncle's house and a renter doesn't take care of it one time, that's going to be very, very, very emotional. Um, people don't realize that. Like when you move out of a house that you lived in and then you rent it out, it's a, it's renters are even the best people in the world, including when I was a renter, it's not your house. And they, it's just a weird feeling to go back in there and go, Oh, look what they did in that boy's, yeah. <laughs> my little boy's bedroom. You know, it just does that to you. You can't keep yourself from doing that. So I doubt you're going to keep it. If you want to fight to keep it, that's fine as a rental. I wouldn't keep it and it's sitting there empty as a museum to your uncle. I think that's a bad idea. Uh, but so you need a good insurance person in your corner that's an independent insurance broker that can help you with all the different kinds of insurance you need in your life. You need a good investing professional in your corner that, you know, like an, a Smart Vester Pro that has the heart of a teacher and will lead you in each of those areas. You need a good tax person, a CPA. In this case, you've already engaged a lawyer to help you with the process. So all of these different experts in these different areas are to teach you something about that area so that you can make good decisions. They're not there to boss you around. They actually work for you. You're paying them. And so they need to keep that in mind. I've had to fire a couple people in the professions over the years that decided their job was to tell me what to do with my life. Instead, (laughs) their job is to teach me, and then I get to decide what I'm going to do based on that knowledge with my life. They must not have known you very well. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I just known that would not fly with just, you. Um, no, I mean, that's probably true. But I mean, I I remember, you know, uh, well, it's just it doesn't matter. But the the uh, an attorney one time that was just telling us that this is the way this has to be. And I said, no, it doesn't have to be that way. I'm not doing it. And he goes, well, you know that that you know, you know and he just the arrogance of it. And finally, I just said, look, I think we're I think we're done. What do you mean we're done? I said, I think you're fired. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not here for you to tell me what to do. I'm here for you to teach me and convince me mm-hmm. that this is the wisest. And in the multitude of counsel, there is safety, and that's what you want. You want a, a group of counsel in your life that'll walk with you through this, Jonathan, and teach you, and, and that'll help you keep from making unwise decisions. And and of course, the overall arching rule is don't take financial advice from broke people including your broke friends, and they all have a lot of opinions right now.